Bear, you ready to go check out the farm? I have missed you guys. We got home late last night from HOA. Uh, we walked around real quick and just laid eyes on all our animals and then completely crashed after that thousand mile journey home. But now it's the next morning. I've got the first really great cup of coffee I've had in a week and I'm about to go check everything out. I thought I'd take you guys with me. Now we did shoot footage while at HOA. Um, it's just lots of different bits and pieces of different parts of our trip. And I am planning on putting that together, kind of doing a recap where we sit down and share our experience with you and show you what it was like from our perspective. Um, however, I wanted to just go ahead and check the farm out first. So that video will be up later this week. There was actually a frost warning while we were gone. And so I didn't know if I was gonna be coming home to a dead garden. Luckily, that was obviously not the case. Everything is still alive and well, though it is a little coolish out here. It's definitely not anywhere near being frosty. I do so miss my garden while I'm gone. Wow, look at these dahlias. Are those gorgeous? Petals are light on front and dark on back. Isn't that lovely? I wish I knew what they were called. I was just given these bulbs and they said purple dahlias, so I don't know, that's really, really pretty. Looks like my kale's getting pretty established over here. I'm looking forward to that being harvestable. Got lots of flowers in the fall garden this year. Oh, I bet there's food to eat over here. <laughs> Let's put this down. Squash is gonna shield my coffee. Yep, I've definitely got some squash in these beds. That one's big. Look at that. Well, I know what we're eating for dinner tonight. I've also got quite a few good sized okras over here. That'll be yummy. Got a good bit of chard right here. This can definitely be a meal soon. That plant's gotten really large. You know, this over here, this is garlic. All of this is, this is where my garlic was planted last year. And so these must have been little bulbs that got left behind. Um, and now they're growing amongst the weeds. Crazy Malabar spinach, let's go under here. Whoa, check this out. This is uh, the Tobaga pepper, I think is what it was called. There's a lot on there. When I checked the forecast from Virginia and saw that we had a frost advisory and Basically what they were saying was that the low was like 36 degrees in the surrounding towns and we do live on a ridge so we're at a higher elevation. I was prepared for um, the garden to be dead when I got home. I kind of like mentally prepared myself that that was a reality. Um, I was hoping that wouldn't be the case because the next two weeks out on the forecast after that really cold night is all you know lows in the 40s and highs in the 60s or so. So coming home to the garden being alive and knowing we've got some pretty warmish fall days ahead of us, I know I'm gonna get to enjoy this really probably for the rest of the month. And I'm really glad, I'm really glad. So Ben Turn did an amazing job taking care of the farm as usual while we were gone. It was really lovely while we were gone to, uh, I mean, we weren't worried at all. We knew everything was in good hands. Um, he did tell us one thing started happening and I'm pretty pumped about it. Got some helpers that have come out here. Hello. Okay, y'all wanna open the chicken coop? Okay. <laughs> so this has started happening again, which is lovely. We've got six eggs in here right now, looking good. Yep. We did the video, uh, what was like a week and a half ago or so, checking our chickens for mites because they haven't been laying. And we had suspected that it was the heat and then that they were molting, but when they just continued to not lay, we began to suspect mites. 
Well, upon checking, I found out that they didn't have mites, but I noticed a lot of their feathers were still filling back in, so I figured we were still just dealing with the after effects of the molt. They started laying just a few days later, so maybe they just needed me to turn them over and give them a massage. <laughs> They're happily giving me eggs again. So one thing we actually do not have right now is a rooster. At least not one that stays in this yard. Randy still makes his way around the property, but uh, he has decided not to live with 30 ladies, and uh, who could really blame him on that? Yeah, I can't blame him. <laughs> so I've actually had a few messages lately asking about how I trained Bear uh, like to behave around the animals and to stay with me. Because as you can see, like when we're in here with the chickens, like he's not fussed about them. He's not trying to go after them or anything like that. Um, Bear's two, and now he is completely trustworthy, but that wasn't always the case. Um, and basically the way that I trained him was like the first probably six months of his life. Like any time that we came out here to do chores, if, and if anybody was going out to do chores, they took Bear on a leash, and so he went and learned that etiquette uh, beside whoever was out there, and he really didn't have an opportunity to do the wrong thing because he was on a leash. And while I was in the house for the first like six months of his life, he was on a leash next to me. I just took him everywhere that I went. And so I kind of trained him to be a little shadow dog because that's what I wanted him to be. But uh, another thing, if you are not really familiar with like dog training commands it, there are YouTube videos out there that teach you how to train the leave it command and that has been like the number one command that we've used in teaching him to leave farm animals alone also it should be noted that he is he's not a German Shepherd he looks a lot like a German Shepherd he's half German Shepherd but he's also half King Shepherd which is a breed that um, it was originated like in the 90s by breeding German Shepherds with Malamutes and Great Pyrenees and so he does genetically have you know the temperament of a guardian dog so that matters a lot it's it's more difficult to train dogs that have really high prey drives to like leave birds alone uh, it can be done I think I think that if you are like really consistently work with any dog it can be done but the main thing in working with dogs is going to be not giving them the opportunity to form bad habits so keep them away from the chickens for the most part um, don't throw them in together whenever the dogs a puppy or even under two years old and expect everything to be okay and then continually like I've seen so many people like the dog kills a chicken they just they beat the dog and they put him back in with the chickens and that's that's just not developing the right uh, circumstances for that dog to succeed so that's been that's been what we've done and he's a great dog Ezra you made it oh, that for a few hours <laughs> yeah. oh thank you darling so let's go through the gate here, and I want to show you something else that's oh, yeah. changed. So in here we have our alpacas, our girly alpacas, and our girly goats. We decided to move this around, um, and Ben Turn actually did the moving of the animals while we were gone, so we came home to them being like this. And I'm really happy with it. Basically, we have a lot more girl goats and girl alpacas than we have boys. And so what we decided to do was we put the boys over where the girls have been, the girl alpacas, and we brought the girls over here. They get along fine with the girl goats and they can be in the same space. So next door we've got the boy goats in one yard, we have the boy alpacas in another. And then here we've got all the girls together and we've opened up all of these yards to connect them, to give them more space, and then into the woods. So of course we do supplement hay. We always have hay for our animals because we don't have a lot of space. So we have to provide roughage. Hi, Miriam. Hey, sweet girl. You think she's being affectionate, but really the flower that Ezra gave me, I put in my pocket and she knows it. So she wants to eat it. This is kind of cool because we get to just have them all out here. They're together. Um, I feel like we'll get to see them more and spend more time with them. Now that it's October and we're home from HOA, there are some kind of things that are forefront of priority. We're getting our new bucks to start breeding our goats. Um, it's time to start breeding alpacas. They are pregnant for a year and we did not want them to be giving birth in the heat of the summer so we waited until fall. And um, it's time to plant garlic. That's kind of not as, doesn't feel quite as boom big but uh, it's also important. <laughs> 
Oh. Two of them are giving it. They've been rolling around in the wet grass. They're all looking a little damp. Yeah. Here's all the girly goats. I'm going to say he finished Which, you know, I'm having to just come to the conclusion that I don't have pregnant goats. That they're just looking fat. That they're just looking kind of fat. I don't know what's going on with their udders looking a little fuller but they should have had babies by today if they were going to and none of them seem super close so we're just going to expose them all to bucks uh, when we get our new bucks here and we'll see what happens isn't that right ness are y'all are y'all playing fetch with bear yeah. Yeah. here we only know that the way you want it go get it <laughs> here we only like the way <laughs> here we only like good boy the way. Buddy, it. step over it oh careful so here's the here's the new development back here. Oh, it looks so cute. So here's the pig barn, finally finished, and we've got hog panels that keep the two mamas separate from one another, but close by. So this girl should be pretty close. Um, and the reason why we went ahead and separated them while we were gone was just in case she did have babies while we were gone. We weren't 100% sure if she was going to, but it doesn't look like that. Um, she is looking a lot closer. No, two are boys and four girls. You can kind of see on the babies that they're starting to get their curly hair, which is kind of cool. Um, their faces are starting to get a little hairy. When we got the mamas, they were 12 weeks old and they were just really starting to fill out with curly hair. One of the things that like now that we've got to set up now that we're home is a creep feeder for the babies and also basically what we're going to need to do soon is separate a space where we can, once the babies are weaned, the ones that we are keeping and growing out, that we can keep them there away from the others because we feed a different diet to our breeder pigs to keep them lean. We don't want them to gain a whole lot of weight. Like we want them to stay really trim and healthy um, and we don't want it to f you know, fill them out too fast. Whereas the babies, we're raised, growing those out so they are gonna be fed a different diet because growing them out, you do want them to gain. So um, once they're weaned, they'll be separated and as of right now, we've got this system so that we can just make sure that everybody is safe and getting what they need. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. I'm gonna part ways now. I will have my HOA video up here pretty soon, but I just knew I had to go around and check everything out on the farm and I wanted to bring you with me. My battery's about to die, so I'm gonna wrap this up and we'll check out the boys later. But uh, I bless you guys, until next time.